hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. We're out here at the Sandland Monorail, and today we're doing another gadget review. We're checking out the Bluetti EB3A portable power station. So we picked up this old monorail train from the Minnesota Zoo a few years back, and it is completely off-grid now. We've moved it out to the middle of the woods in Wisconsin. It just sits here, it doesn't move around, because, for one thing, we don't have any power out here. So we come out here, we use this as a camping cabin, or overnight weekend cabin, and, you know, it's nice to be able to charge your phone, to use gadgets and whatnot, even though we're off-grid. So, fortunately, Bluetti has sent me this EB3A to test out. Now, this is a sponsored review because they did send me a free one of these to investigate. But, as with all my reviews, I'm going to try to be completely honest and upfront with all the pros and cons of this device. plastic handle on this inner box uh, has already failed, so hopefully the actual product holds together better than the packaging. Alright, so right out of the box we've got our main unit, our battery pack and power station. All the controls, all the inputs and outputs are on the front, except for a wireless charging pad on the top. Now, this is the first time I've ever owned anything with a wireless charging pad. I'm not even sure if my phone is new enough to do wireless charging, so we may or may not be able to test that. The rest of the unit is pretty anonymous plastic box. It does have some product information on the bottom. Has this nice carry handle on the top. And then uh, comes with a couple cords. We've got the charging cord, pretty generic computer type cord. And then we've got this uh, junction cord, which you can use to hook up additional batteries. You can use to hook up solar panels. This particular unit that I got for testing doesn't come with any solar panels, but the company does offer a variety of those, different wattages, different sizes, and those would let you charge this off-grid, out in the field, or wherever you need to use it, away from city power. Now, I have to say, I'm actually kind of impressed with the manual. Uh, it's well put together, everything's spelled correctly, I haven't found any weird translations, and actually this one is an all-English manual, it's not just the same page copied over into 23 different languages. So this actually gives you some really in-depth information, uh, gives you a lot of info about how to store the thing, how to use the thing, all kinds of options that it has, like overrides and custom power frequencies, all kinds of useful stuff. So before even turning it on, I have to say the paperwork that comes with it is pretty helpful. So we've got a bunch of different modes here. We have AC power. Right out of the box it has 72% battery power. We can also turn on the DC power. And a little indicator here shows that that's on. Now we have the AC. I heard it click, so there's a relay in there that fires up the built-in inverter. We've got a little lantern or light here. Pretty bright. We have our standard cigarette lighter plug for 12-volt devices. A couple USB-A outputs, a USB-C output, and then our two 120-volt AC outputs. Here's our input for charging. Circuit breaker. And then uh, this is an input for a car adapter, or our solar panel cables, if we had any solar panels with this. Before I actually bring this out to Sandland, I'm going to go ahead and charge it up for the day. So our input shows that we're charging around 180 to 250 watts, and it looks like it's going to take less than a half hour to fully charge. You'll also notice when I plugged it in, it went into UPS mode, so this thing can serve as an uninterruptible power supply for computer equipment, or as an emergency power supply or backup. If your city power goes out while you have things plugged into this, it will automatically switch over to the internal battery. Now you might also notice this little logo down here. This is actually a sine wave inverter, which is a nicer inverter than a lot of the cheapo ones you can get at the hardware store. A sine wave is going to give you a true 60 hertz output, and that's going to be a lot better for computer equipment, for sensitive electronics. It's going to be just a generally better or cleaner power than you'd get from a typical car inverter. After charging for a few minutes, the unit gets warm enough that a little fan over here kicks on. It's not super loud or annoying, but you can definitely notice it if you're in a small room. Now the fan does throttle itself up and down a little bit, and it makes some kind of disconcerting noises sometimes. Now I am noticing a very slight odor with this thing. It's not like a burning smell or anything, it's more like a plastic factory smell that you get with a lot of new stuff right out of the box. I'd say if you buy one of these new, let it sit around for a little while before you put it in an enclosed space like a tent or a car. That smell will go away after a little while. There is a Blue Eddy app that you can get for Android, and that lets you control some of the features of the power station right from your phone. You can connect to it by Bluetooth. 
and now I can get some stats about the device right from my phone. So I do have grid input, I'm getting about 150 watts in, and I'm at 88% battery capacity. So you'll notice it clicked there, the light came on, I've just turned on the AC outputs, and I can turn them off again. So if you're using this at your campsite, you don't even really need to be next to it to control it. I can also control the work mode of the unit between standard, turbo, and silent. I can control the uh, eco mode settings, the LED light. So another really cool feature that this has is power lifting. Now, unfortunately, that has nothing to do with getting into the gym on time. What it does do is let you adjust the output voltage and the current. So you can actually run bigger stuff like a space heater or an electric iron. That's crazy. You can't do that with a regular battery pack. You probably can't even do that with most car inverters. So that's a really useful feature. Now, it does recommend that you don't run major appliances on it, but for camping, for off-grid use, for emergency use, having the ability to run a space heater is pretty cool. All right, looks like we are fully charged, so let's cut back to Sandland and see what this thing can do. Using an old monorail as a camping cabin is a lot like having any other remote cabin. There's always maintenance work to do and chores and things to fix, so it's nice to have a little portable power when you need to use small power tools. It runs this Dremel tool just great. Or we might want to play some music in the middle of the woods. I don't actually know how to play one of these, so I'm just using the built-in demo mode. We also have our network of underground tunnels here at Sandland, including the Sandbar, this underground speakeasy that I've been digging out in another series of videos. Now, I actually forgot to bring a flashlight to do this uh, little film segment here. Fortunately, the Blue Eddy has that built-in lantern, which I'm using right now. I have my camera perched right on top of the power station. I've got the onboard light on, and it seems to be lighting up the room just fine. This thing actually has a really bright lantern. You can explore a cave with it. All right, so I'm not really exploring a cave because we've dug all this out ourselves, so we know where it goes. However, when we're digging these tunnels out, we still don't have 24-hour electricity. We're still on an off-grid property. We're not on an electric line, so all of our power has to be home generated. Now, when we're digging, when we're using power tools, we have a generator running way back out on the surface, 100 feet up that way somewhere, and that works okay. We can't really run the generator down in here, though, because there would be fumes and we can't run it right near the entrance because the exhaust could get inside the tunnel. So that's when something like the Blue Eddy comes in. If I'm down here just hanging out or doing some kind of detail project, not necessarily running the giant jackhammers, we don't need a full-on gasoline generator running, and it would be nice to have a little portable power station. So something like the Blue Eddy is perfect for this use down here in the tunnel. I can just bring the thing down here to the sandbar. I can charge my phone. I could run some little rope lights. Kind of do whatever you need with it. And I'm not even saying that just for the review purposes. I've actually been carving out a little niche here in the sandstone behind the bar, and I've been intending to put something down there like a car battery and an inverter and a little power system. Well, you know what? This is an all-in-one power system, and I think it would work just fine down there. I might have to put it in a waterproof box because there is some pretty high humidity down here, but I think it would work pretty well. Okay, so like I said, I can't run the 1400 watt jackhammer on this thing. Even with the power boost, this is a little too much. However, I can run a 300 watt drill if I want to do small detail projects or build things down here in the tunnel. All right, well that's all been very practical so far. How about something impractical? Let's do a little tunnel music while we're down here. I still don't know how to play one of these. Still, it's fun to think that if we ever do find someone who knows how to play the piano, we can have live music down in our bar cave thanks to the power bank. So while we were down here in the tunnels, we've randomly encountered somebody with a phone that does wireless charging. Let's see if it works. Alright, so we've been down here at Sandland for a while, and we've been doing all kinds of tests with this. We've been running the light, we've been running drills, we've been running the keyboard. So even screwing around a little bit with different projects, we still have 97% battery capacity remaining. I think that's pretty good. 
Okay, so back here at the monorail, I did want to show off our previous power system that we were using before we got the Blue Eddy power bank. Now, we do have some solar panels up on the roof, and we've got a little charge controller here, and then down, down kind of in the guts of the monorail, we've got an old boat battery, and that kind of works. Uh, my wiring isn't the best, and the raccoons climb around in here, and they pull everything apart, and they poop on stuff, and it's not an ideal situation. And then the other problem with this battery system is, other than a couple built-in lights, our only real way to get power out of it is these USB plugs here in the monorail control cabin. And we don't honestly hang out in the control cabin all that often. When we're out here camping, we actually use this second car for our camp spot more often. Uh, it's a little cleaner, it's a little easier to contain, we've got most of our junk in here, and in the five or six years that we've owned this monorail, we haven't bothered to run power over to this second car. So our existing power system is just really inconvenient. I'm thinking this little Blue Eddy power bank is going to solve all those problems. We're not going to have to run wires over here. We're not going to have to screw around with that 12-volt battery. We can just bring this thing out anytime that we want to camp here. I would say the Blue Eddy EB3A power bank is a pretty good system. I think it's going to work out just great at our off-grid monorail cabin. It's going to work just great in our tunnels and should work just fine for any camping trips that we go on. Okay, we've come back home to give this thing a little bit more of a long-term endurance test. Currently, the Blue Eddy EB3A is powering a TV, a satellite dish receiver, it's fast charging my phone, and it's charging a GoPro. So we're using about 112 watts, and it's still at 93%, and it says it has over two hours of power left in it. So theoretically, we can do all this stuff for another two hours. I'm going to leave the TV on and leave this stuff charging and see how long this actually lasts. All right, we're about an hour into this test. We still have 41% battery capacity remaining. Our output has dropped down to 91 watts, probably because my phone is now full. The GoPro is still charging, and the Blue Eddy says we still have about an hour of power remaining. All right, it's been two hours. My TV and my satellite dish are still running. My GoPro's charged, my phone's charged. We're down to 11% on the battery bank. Now, the manual actually recommends not going below 20% because uh, that could affect the battery life long term. So I'm actually gonna stop here. I'm not gonna drain it all the way down to zero, but I'm pretty happy getting two hours of device charging and TV watching out of this unit. And that's not even starting at 100%. It was in 90 something range when I started. I've plugged it back in, it's recharging, and it looks like it's going to refill two hours of battery use in less than an hour, so that's pretty convenient. So, in conclusion, I would say that the Bluetti EB3A is a pretty good little unit. I had some uh, skepticism at the beginning of this video, especially when the box started falling apart as I opened it, but you know what, the box had nothing to do with the device. The device itself seems to be pretty solidly made, I've been really happy with the battery life, that seems to be just as advertised. I've been happy with all the features, I'm happy with how fast it charges up and how long it can power typical devices. It's nice and portable, all the controls make sense, everything's easy to use, and I really haven't found any issues with it other than the fan can be heard in a small room and it does have that slight factory smell for the first few uses. But I think those are kind of minor issues. Everything else has gone perfectly, I've had no major problems with this, and I would honestly buy another one. I think it'd be cool to have one for the monorail, one for the tunnel. Uh, heck, maybe I'd even get a third one for other camping trips. I'd also be interested in trying out Blue Eddy's solar panel system. We've done some trips like last year when we went out to Death Valley, where it would have been really handy to have a little power station like this, especially with solar charging. So that's something I'm going to look into in the future. If you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, I'll throw some links down in the description to the Amazon site and to Blue Eddy's own website where you can look up specs on this thing, you can look up their other products, you can look at accessories, and just find out more information about them. Check out the other content on my channel for non-review stuff, DIY projects, sandland stuff, monorail stuff, tunnel stuff, and all kinds of other videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.